At the end of our last video, we were discussing the lab where you entered and worked with this specific rung of logic. And just to refresh your memory, you have two instructions there. One is a read instruction that reads the state of my second bit, which is defined as a Boolean data type, a bit in memory. It reads the state of that bit, and if the bit is on, then this instruction is true. Since it is the only instruction in the entire rung that makes the rung true. The output energize, or direct coil as they call it, I, I just call it energize output, direct coil if you like. That instruction writes to a memory location. It is addressing my first bit, another Boolean defined bit memory. This particular instruction writes to that memory location every single program scan thousands of times per second. That is, if you're in the run mode. If you're in the program mode, or in this case we're offline, you're looking at uh, the offline program. And by the way, there is only offline projects. What gets downloaded is not ladder logic. It's machine level language. But that's a discussion for another time. What you're looking at is a rung that is true if my second bit is on in memory. And if the rung is true, then that output instruction, OTE, output energize, or direct coil, it writes a 1 to my first bit. If that rung is false, it writes a 0 to my first bit thousands of times per second. If that rung is true, for one minute, then 60 times 1,000 or more, meaning that 100,000 times it tells my first bit, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on. And then when the run goes false, it continually says to my first bit, thousands of times per second, you're off, you're off, you're off. Now these two memory locations have absolutely no connection to the outside world. Absolutely zero other than from your keyboard connected components workbench while online with the controller allows you to directly access those two bits of memory and that's what you did in the last lab you toggled them on or off by simply right clicking on the instructions or the bits in memory I can toggle them on or off when I'm online the closest approximation or I would say an approximation to this behavior would be if you're using an HMI, Human Machine Interface, op Operator Interface Terminal, Man Machine Interface, in other words, a screen, whether it's a touch screen or a screen with membrane keypads. These HMIs, screens, you, you can touch things and look at things. They replace the older panels that had push buttons and lights on it, and in some cases, numerical displays thumb wheel switches, LED readouts, etc. The HMIs of the current state of the art, when you touch something on a screen, it turns on a bit in memory of the controller. That means that the screen object has a connection to a bit in memory. If you were troubleshooting this rung of logic, my first bit, of course, is a standalone bit memory that has no connection to any I.O. My second bit in a real program, if it has no connection that you can see, then it is either something that was put in there for the programmer, the troubleshooter, the technician, the engineer to be able to talk on and off for some purpose of their own, or it's connected to an HMI. And you won't know that in the program just by looking at it. You'll have to ferret that out for yourself. Now if you went to the screen that is connected to this controller, which there isn't one, not really. I do have a little HMI attached to it, but I'm not using that HMI for anything. If you were to go to the, the program in that screen and look for any screen object that had a connection to my second bit, then that would tell you that's how that bit's being controlled. But in this case, what we wanted to show you was that when a program executes, it is solely 
an interaction between bits in memory and other bits in memory, or words in memory and other words in memory. It has no connection to the outside whatsoever. Now, in the case of I.O. memory locations, which we showed you in global variables, let that open a second, that is an output bit. This is an input bit. I.O. embedded digital input zero. This bit in memory right here, it's a system variable, it is directly controlled by whatever is electrically connected to terminal zero on the controller. However, the controller has to be running in order for this bit to be affected by the input. Whereas the output, if there's no program in there, the only way that that could get turned on would be if you went in and directly toggled it. So what we were trying to do is first establish for you that when you're looking at a rung of logic, that these memory locations have nothing directly to do with anything outside of memory of the controller. Now, if one of these bits or both of them were actual I.O. data types, then they would be directly controlled or controlling of external devices. So we're going to move on from there. At the end of the project, the last project, there were a number of scenarios that I had you exercise toggling bits on and off, going between program mode, run mode, etc. This was all to establish firmly for you the relationship between program execution and the modes of the controller. The actual answers to any of the questions, those blanks are put in there for you to record what you see. And everything that you recorded has to line up with what we've discussed. Okay, on with the next project. The first thing I had you do in the next project was to add another rung of logic. Now there's a variety of ways that you can do this. You see my instructions up here. Uh, this is part of the new feature pack. It's not part of just standard version 11. So you might have to go over here to your toolbox to get your rung. And I think I'll do that for the most part until we get far enough along that you feel comfortable with either. So I'm gonna drag a rung over here. I see a plus sign, I drop it. Then I needed a direct coil or an OTE. Now notice that my cursor shows a plus sign. See right there? I could drop it right there. If I keep going, see I see it don't drop it here. But as long as I stay near the line and let go of it, it'll go where it's supposed to go. This one is called bit two. So I'm going to cancel this and collapse that so you can see we have an instruction that has no memory location to address. In the manual, I had you edit existing tag names, not create new ones. So if I go back to local variables, I can edit the names here. And wh what I'm doing is I'm focusing on this tag name and I am changing the name of the tag, not creating a new tag. I'll double click on it or just click on it and then type in bit two. And I'll go to this one. I have just edited those two tags, my first bit and my second bit. You see, they no longer show up here in the program one variables. There are no tag names now, my first bit and my second bit. I edited the existing. I didn't create two new tag names. So we go back to our program here and you see now it says bit one and bit two. Now you see I kind of flipped them around a little bit. This is now bit one and it used to be my second bit. Now this is going to be bit two. So in RS Logics 500, I could have drug this bit up to here and dropped it. You see that doesn't work here. I could go here and type in bit and then when it comes up, double click on it and I've got it. 
that's an improvement that they need to make to con connect a components workbench that I can drag an address from any location to another location. See, it won't let me drop it there. That's not what you would get in RS Logic 500 or 5000. So I look for that to be improved on sometime in the future. So I had you create a new rung, but also edit the existing tag names so they look like this. So this gave you and a little additional experience of editing an existing tag name as opposed to creating a new one. Then I had you download it. I'm just going to click on download to keep it simple. I'm going to pause while it takes place. And of course this mes message will come up always and you have a choice of downloading just the program or downloading the program and the data table. Just download because at this point it's really not going to make much difference but we're not going to go to the run mode once we get there. This message comes up and in the manual I said click on no. And this is what pops up exactly as you saw in the manual. I'm going to close this output window because we don't need it. This is in the remote program mode. Now how can you tell that? Well, this rung is true. It looks true. And this is off, but it would be off because this rung is false and it would turn it off. So I cannot tell right off the top of my head whether this is in the run mode or not. However, if I go to the Micro 820, I can see that it's in the program mode. One thing that I re-emphasized at the beginning of this lab was that everything from here to the left is always true or false. It is never on or off. Everything from here to the right is either on or off. These instructions are never true or false. The wrong is true or false, but these output instructions are never true or false. They are either executing their true execution from a true wrong or a false execution from a false run. Now remember, we're in the program mode. We're not running the code yet. Everything from here to the left is never on or off. Now you can look at that instruction and say because of the its color and the fact that it shows it's false, it's false because that bit is off. Therefore, I know this bit is off. But the color of everything from here to the left is determined by true or false, never on or off. Now indirectly you could say, well, that bit is off, therefore that determines the color, and the color tells you that the bit is off. That is true. But when you read the logic, that's false, and this is on or off. This is true, and that's off. This is false, and that's off. Now remember, we're in the remote program mode, so you're really not seeing the actual state of the logic. Next, I had to go to the run mode. Now, run mode change, that's, uh, that would change the programs, but let's stick to the Micro 820 tab, or the controller tab, and put it into the run mode, and then go back to the program. Okay, now we're in the run mode, and it still looks the same, because this rung is true, it turns that bit on. But then, less than a thousandth of a second later, this rung is false and it turns it right back off. So these two rungs are being scanned and these two instructions are being executed thousands of times a second. What you see displayed is going to be at the end of the program scan. First rung turns the bit on, the second rung turns it back off. So you're always going to see it is off. And this in PLC land is called last man wins. Now if I were to reverse the order of these rungs that would be a different story. In which case I will have you do that. So the answers for the fill in blanks are based on what we are discussing. I'm going to flip the order of those rungs and then come back. Okay, I'm back. So all that I did was, there's two ways you could do this. You could use the run mode change and try to do it online, or you could just go to the Micro 
820 and go to the program mode. Now, if you have an 810, you're not going to be able to do any edits. So for all intents and purposes, let's just say that I saved it, then went offline, disconnected, made the changes, and then downloaded it, and here we are again in the run mode. All that I did offline was I took this rung right here, which used to be rung two, and I drug it up here, saved it, built it, and downloaded it, and put it in the run mode, and here I am. Now, you can compare this to the previous image, which in your manual, you have both images, one above the other, to look at to compare. Nothing's changed. So in the manual, you had this bit was down here originally, and then we moved it above. Because this is false, it turns that bit off. Because this rung is true, it turns it right back on. So this is called scan dependent logic. It depends on what order the rungs are scanned in the end results. With the rungs in the previous positions, this bit would always be off at the end of the scan. By flipping the position of the two rungs, now this bit is always on at the end of the scan. At this point, I had you save and disconnect to make the next edit. I'm going to pause and do that. Okay, I disconnected. I'm going to go to my toolbox. I could go up here and grab the reverse contact. Now notice that they're starting to include both names. Direct coil, output energized, reverse contact, examine if open, examine if closed. And I, in the manual, discussed what these mean. Examine if open, examine if closed, output energized. I'm not going to rehash that. However, I'll go over to the toolbox and I will grab a reverse contact and drag it over here and drop it. Now immediately it's going to ask me for a memory location to address with that instruction. Now I want it to be bit 1. So I can just click on bit 1 and say OK and it puts it in there. And then collapse this back down so we can see the entire rung. I'm going to reconnect. Now, this particular controller and my, if you look up at the top there in the title bar, Connected Components Workbench Developer Edition. The software that I'm using has run mode change. And rather than convolute the process, I'm going to stick to, for those of you that don't have run mode change, I'm going to try to stick to the roundabout way of doing it. Run 2 is no longer unconditionally true. However, nothing really changed because the true if off instruction that I added to rung 2 that's addressing bit 1, because bit 1 is off, now that instruction is true. So that rung is still true. It's turning on bit 2. However, if I were to toggle bit 1, either, either place, I can toggle it here. See? Now this is true and this is false. This is true. It turns the bit on. This is false. It turns the bit right back off. I can toggle it in either location. But we're still left with the same condition here. Last man wins. The moral to the story is do not ever use two OTEs addressing the same bit in memory because the last one that's scanned is going to win which means this rung right here, the last one, overrules this one no matter what that rung does. I also had you change this to bit 3. So I'm going to do that now and then come back. Just a reminder, notice that when I type in bit 3 here, the little yellow warning triangle comes up saying something's wrong. Well, what's wrong is that bit 3 is not actually a tag name yet. It's not been defined. Now it is defined. You see the yellow triangle is gone. Okay, we're back. It, if you do have access to run mode change, it seems to take almost as long to facilitate any edits as it does just to go offline, make the changes, and download. Now hopefully that improves because the current function of mode change, which although it could be handy, Compared to RS Logic's 500 or 5000 is not quite there yet. 
Hopefully by the time you watch this video they've improved that. Next I had you save, disconnect, and make some more edits. Let's do that. We went offline, disconnected, went offline, and we added these two instructions and these two new tag names or tags defined as booleans into the program variables database, bit four and bit five. These six, or I should say five tag names, bit one through bit five, they could be anything. They don't even have to have a number in it. But just for the sake of clarity doing the lab, we got to give them some kind of a name that seems to have some sort of sequence or logic to it. So now we're going to download. So we click download and I'll pause and wait for this to complete. We had you add two more, these two new instructions and then download. And we specifically said not to switch it to the run mode because when we created these new bits, they are created in the off state. In other words, if you create a new tag, define it as a boolean, it's not going to appear as being on or a one. That's going to require you to toggle it or to execute against it with your logic. When you downloaded and went online in the remote program mode, this is what you saw. The first rung is false and bit two is off. The second rung is true and bit three is off. That's a clue right there that you're not in the run mode because otherwise bit three would be on. Now there's one exception to that. Last man wins, scan dependent logic. If in some of the location in this program you were turning bit three off after this rung. Now we know we only have two rungs, but let's say that we had another program and these bits were global variables, whatever. Out of your view, there's another rung after this rung that has an OTE actually addressing bit three, but the rung is false. It would look just like this. But that's your only real clue right here that you're in the program mode and not in the run mode. So I had you toggle the state of bit one. It doesn't matter which one of these that you toggle because you're not toggling the instruction. You're toggling the bit to the opposite state. That bit is, and remember that um, this is a true if on and true if off. So it was off, now it's on. You saw this go from red to blue and this from blue to red. That's the true false state. So this, the reason I had you do this, these are both address bit one, correct? One's red and the other's blue. What does that tell you about whether or not the state of bit one is directly, the status of it, directly exhibited here. It's not. If you read the instruction, it infers that the bit is on. But the highlight doesn't tell you whether it's on or off. That tells you whether the instruction is true or false. The actual instruction itself that reads that memory location, it infers that bit one is on right now. So then I had to switch to the run mode and then go back to your program. Right, nothing has changed. I mean, if you look at your illustration in the book, it shows that bit one was on, bit four is off. That's inferred by the state of the instructions. And we went to the run mode, nothing changed because uh, these rungs weren't true before and they're still not true. In other words, the state of those bits, one, four, and five, were such that the rungs look false in the program mode. We can go back to that real quick. So you see, neither rung looks true. And if you didn't know you were in the program mode, you would look and say, well, this is on, so that's true, that's off, so that's false. Rung's false, turn off bit two. Because bit one is on here, therefore it's automatically gonna be false here because both these can never be true at the same time. It can't be on and off at the same time. And bit five is evidently off, bit five is off. This is false, that's true, therefore the rung is false and turns off bit three. 
If I click off here, you can see the little red spot there. So you begin with a wrong true in to both wrong one and two. So you see the dark red there and you see some dark red there. However, because that bit is on, this is blue and that's red. You can see the little tick marks here that show the boundary of the true false for these instructions. And this is all for your benefit when you're troubleshooting. I ask you some questions there, but the answers, the fill-ins are all based on what I just told you. Next, we're going to involve some actual digital inputs in our logic, but for now, we're done with this project.